It was 1942. Cattle were urgently evacuated from frontline areas to the eastern parts of the country. Lack of feeds and appropriate care led to diseases and massive deaths of livestock. I remember one especially. It was autumn, already cold, and they drove the cattle herds. Some animals were affected with foot and mouth disease. Locals had to keep these diseased animals in order to cure them, and they gave their healthy animals instead of diseased ones so that animals could reach the destination. During the post-war years, FMD situation in the USSR became even worse. Losses caused by the virus to the war-weakened country were as high as billions of rubles. It seemed FMD would never be defeated. The country took unprecedented measures to combat an invisible enemy. Eradication of primary FMD outbreaks strictest quarantine procedures, and, of course, the development of effective vaccines. Exactly then, in 1958, it was decided to establish the All-Russian FMD Institute in the Vladimir Land. It was necessary to develop diagnostic kits. It was necessary to develop vaccines as well as to work out the system of control measures and arrange the production of the biologicals. The employees of our institute, mostly young people, who were to be trained in all those aspects, had to deal with it, and constant on-site visits, visits to the places where FMD occurred. The institute coped with the challenge successfully. Foot and mouth disease was eradicated in the USSR in the beginning of the 80s. However, after the USSR collapse, the institute found itself at a crossroads. The institute patrons at those difficult times were veterinarians with a capital V, Vyacheslav Avilov and Pavel Rachmanin. In the 1990s, Avilov headed the veterinary service under the Russian Ministry of Agriculture, and Rachmanin was his deputy. They gave to the institute the most important thing, the chance to move forward. No wonder people believe that the name determines the fate. In 2003, the institute was renamed into the Federal Center for Animal Health, and since 2004, under the umbrella of the Rosalhoznadzor, it has been moving toward the expansion of international relations. We had to reshape some structural units of our institution to be able to tackle the tasks set before the Rosalhoznadzor. The main distinctive feature of our institute is that we are ready to provide scientific support. It means that we do not just sell vaccines. Now it means our scientists go on-site, check their use, test the immunity levels, and provide general technical support. This will improve also the efficacy of scientific work and will have a beneficial effect on everything, including export. In the 2000s, the poultry farm Yaroslavl Broiler was on the verge of bankruptcy. The decision to transfer to a new foreign crossbreed seemed to be risky, but necessary. The Institute backed the establishment just in time. It started performing the clinical examination of commercial poultry and its vaccination. Today, the Yaroslavl broiler is the biggest poultry processing plant in its region. The Institute can provide many such examples. Animal infectious diseases have existed 
exist, and will always exist. In the recent years, highly pathological avian influenza has vastly spread. African swine fever is rampant. FMD outbreaks regularly occur in different parts of the world. To eradicate a virus in nature is a hard task. If you remove someone from the environment, which it has inhabited for centuries, someone other will fill this gap. That is why we need to watch and control this someone. This is the main thing. The Federal Center for Animal Health is, above all, the scientific institution. It deals not only with the diagnostics of all major diseases of animals, birds, and fish. It produces biological preparations and diagnostic kits. It performs independent testing for food safety. With the Information and Analysis Center, the Institute is able to forecast what can occur, where and when it can occur, because it is easier to prevent the disease than to cure it. That is the way it happened with lumpy skin disease. We knew that the disease was sneaking up on our borders, and we developed the vaccine successfully used in the Russian Federation, and the outbreaks, when they occurred, were contained. However, fortune is unpredictable. In 2013, the south of Russian Far East and northeast of China were trapped by the forces of nature. A huge flood evoked FMD outbreaks. Infected animal carcasses from flooded Chinese pastures were brought by the water currents to the Russian border. The institute responded rapidly. The specialists went on site to take samples, typed the isolated virus in the laboratories, selected appropriate vaccines, rendered the consultancy to the regional veterinary services, and as a result, FMD was eradicated at the primary outbreaks. We feel that we are highly demanded. We are in good form and we can solve any problem. The Institute is forward-thinking in combating its archenemy. The status of the OIE and FAO Reference Laboratory supports that. Because the assistance to neighboring countries is the guarantee of Russia's freedom from epidemics. During the last three years, we have tripled the export supplies. And I will tell you, this is not the limit. Because several countries now, for example, Taiwan, have eradicated FMD using our vaccines as they have vaccinated their population for 15 to 18 years before. We started importing ARIA vaccines in 2001, and the vaccination campaign was successful because firstly, the vaccine was based on O Taiwan strain, specific for our region. And secondly, the Taiwanese government trusted in high quality of area vaccines. And since our Russian partner has proved itself an institution producing high quality vaccines, we would like to continue our cooperation in other fields too, including poultry diseases. May 2018, at the OIE General Session in Paris, the Federal Center for Animal Health was granted a long-awaited status of the OIE Reference Laboratory for Avian Influenza and Newcastle Disease. But the ambitious plans of the Institute go further than that. We are also preparing files to apply for the status of the OIE Reference Laboratory for African Swine Fever. Now we are actively developing diagnostic kits based on PCR. This is a highly accurate technique. In other words, two to four hours are needed to make a diagnosis. Animal health control requires staunch allies. The Institute has been effectively cooperating with the French company CEPIC for about 10 years. And CEPIC, a global leader in production of ingredients for medical, pharmaceutical, and veterinary purposes, treasures this cooperation. 
It goes without saying that we want to maintain active scientific, technical and business cooperation with the Federal Center for Animal Health. We have many joint projects such as development of new products for pig and poultry production, and we hope that working together we will be able to introduce innovative products into poultry production. Interrelations with International Scientific Society, ushering innovative technologies into production, all this has borne fruit. In February of 2017, the Federal Center for Animal Health was privileged to hold GMP certificate. This document confirms that the products of the Institute comply with the highest international standard of quality and safety. Today, the FGBI ARIA produces diagnostic kits and vaccines against diseases of cattle, pigs, poultry, and wild carnivores. In total, more than 100 product items, 78 different vaccines, 21 diagnostic kits, 7 chemotherapeutical drugs protected by 69 Russian Federation patents. When our scientific developments are brought to life in products, diagnostic kits, vaccines, which are highly demanded, not only in our country, but on the fiercely competitive global market occupied by the companies with a centuries-long history, it means we keep pace successfully. We are the best exporters, and this is recognized. Utrecht is the largest city in the Netherlands. Once in four years, an international agricultural show takes place here. Vive Europe 2018 involved more than 600 exhibitors and 25,000 visitors from 136 countries. The Federal Center for Animal Health is a welcome guest at the events of such level. Every time it is a great occasion for us, it means good mood, meeting our friends and partners, new and positive emotions, new experience in international cooperation, of course. Well, and this is a big plus for our international image, for our institution. In 2014, the Federal Center for Animal Health opened a new branch. The new life started for the former Crimean Experimental Station under the Institute for Clinical and Experimental Veterinary Medicine. The ambitious tasks were set before our specialists, and all the specialists employed by the institution were fully committed to their work. Along with Broad Horizons, a big responsibility came because the Institute branch is, in fact, unique in the peninsula. It is destined to protect safety of agricultural products in the Republic of Crimea. Now, the site is under reconstruction. In future, we will have two buildings there, I mean two laboratories. One laboratory will deal with food safety and the other will address epizootological issues. We have already made a staff team involving employees trained at our institute as well. They are PhD students. In the future, they will defend their candidate theses and become candidates of veterinary and biological sciences. The heart of the institute is definitely people. Great scientific advances are impossible without qualified staff. We hope that the significance of the Institute will only grow, and we make numerous efforts for people to realize that it is an honor today to work at the Institute. Currently, 880 people are employed by the Federal Center for Animal Health. 130 out of them are candidates of sciences and 30 employees are PhD students. Behind these dry figures are lives of people who devoted themselves to a beloved profession, and through their own example, they brought up worthy successors. Not only is my dad working at this institution, my mom also worked here. They were so lively in their descriptions. Everything was so interesting and amazing. This is a real profession. 
profession of talented people, and at the same time, so useful for the society. I should say that I've been in good places with good people, so professional. That's why I've never regretted that I've chosen the pathway of a veterinarian. Yes, I have given my whole life to a beloved occupation.